will set up the recording and we all, I think, have to click continue. Let me uh, bring a greeting to you from the Commonwealth Lawyers Association. My name is Brian Spears. I am speaking to you from Belfast in Northern Ireland, the United Kingdom. And this is a unique occasion for the CLA in that we bring greetings and recollections and memories of a member of our CLA family, uh, the late Soli Sorabji. We are, of course, mindful that this is an opportunity for us to share uh, our friendship and our recollections of uh, Soli, but it's also, of course, a sad and personal occasion uh, for the family who have lost a, a husband and dad. And we're very honored indeed to have with us uh, so far uh, Soli's wife, Zina, and two of his children, uh, Zia and Hormads, and we may be joined by his other son in due course. And so we're very honored, the members of the Sarabji family, uh, to be here. And we thank you for the opportunity of, of allowing us to share our recollections uh, of Soli. Uh, the CLA family uh, has been greatly influenced and touched by Soli over the years. And a testament to that is the fact that uh, so many past presidents have uh, assembled today to share recollections over, uh, over a couple of decades, actually. And I hope that that will bring uh, the CLA memory of Solly to life, and it will allow all of us to have this uh, pleasing opportunity to bring a greeting to you, the family, and to share our thoughts. Uh, the meeting is being recorded, and we hope that those unable to attend today will be able to access it uh, in due course. Of course, Soli was a very eminent jurist and lawyer in India, twice Attorney General of that great nation, and, uh, but so much more as I think we will uh, discover. Uh, he clearly has been a mentor to many, uh, a friend to all who knew him, and a great influence across the Commonwealth family. I tried to think of a suitable term for a collection of presidents, and my research suggested that a succession of presidents was favoured. I had wondered about a, an array of presidents or a panoply of presidents. I then mischievously thought of a murder of presidents, uh, but I've settled on a distinction of presidents. And I'm going to introduce all of our, our distinguished past presidents uh, in a moment, uh, just while I bring a greeting to Jahangir, uh, son of uh, Soli. Thank you very much for joining Jahangir. That's the whole family now present. And if you could go on mute, I will uh, introduce our first uh, past president to the group. Uh, the first in our uh, distinguished set of speakers from this distinction of presidents um, is Santan, uh, our dear friend, my immediate predecessor, who coming from Solly's uh, home jurisdiction of India will bring an initial greeting and then will have his own opportunity uh, in the running order of presidents from the, the, uh, the, 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 the most um, senior up to the, the present day, the most recent president. But Santan, could you start our proceedings by uh, your own words of greeting uh, coming from Solly's home jurisdiction? Thank you, Brian. Greetings to the family of late Soli Sorabji, the esteemed panelists, colleagues from India and across the Commonwealth. My first interaction with Soli was in 1977 when he came to Hyderabad to address a seminar on freedom of speech. It was during emergency between the years 1975 and 77, when there was huge curtailment of free speech, solely took up the cause of victims pro bono. He came to earn a name as a public spirited human rights lawyer. Later on, he authored his first publication on press censorship. During 80s, he appeared for the victims of anti-Sikh riots. In this process, he came closer 
to the activities of the Commonwealth Lawyers Association for being a proponent of free speech and espousing the cause of human rights. He was given the highest civilian award of Padma Vibhushan. In the legal profession, Soli earned his name as a constitutional lawyer and rose to became the Attorney General for India. He was recognized internationally and got assignments from the United Nations. He became a popular face at the Commonwealth Law Conferences. During his 80th birthday in 2010, the headline of a leading newspaper read like this, Constitution of India 60 and Soli 80. That explains who drew inspiration from this document to become a lawyer in 1953. He grew up along with the Constitution of India during its twists and turns and as a captain played an important role in keeping the ship steady. Soli will also be remembered for his wit and advocacy skills. One instance that comes to my mind is when Soli was appearing for the suspended Indian test cricketers who deviated on their return journey from West Indies. Proceedings before the Supreme Court began. Battery of lawyers were present, but Soli was missing. Suddenly, everybody saw Soli rushing inside the court and telling the court he was late because he was coming running from the fine leg boundary. Suddenly, the entire court burst into laughter, including the judges, that lightened the atmosphere in the court and solely escaped the wrath of the court. But my close interaction with Soli began when India won the bid to host the conference in 2011. I must tell you that in the last six months before the conference, Every day morning began with a 7 a.m. telephone call from Soli, meeting him either in the court or at his residence was an everyday routine. That would explain how meticulous was the planning and execution for a successful conference. Through this close interaction, I, come, I came to know Soli as a great human being. All of us know about various qualities of Soli, but I came to know that he was a great human being. And as a leader of the bar, the kind of weight he carried across the legal, social, and political spectrum was remarkable. To recall one instance, when Soli wrote a letter inviting these and Prime Minister of India to come and inaugurate the conference. Having come to the conference, in his opening words, Dr. Manmohan Singh said that Soli was his friend and therefore had to accept his request. Finally, may I say, it is more than a decade since the conference passed away in Hyderabad, but hardly a month passed without me meeting Soli. Invariably at every meeting, the topic for discussion was CLA, CLCs, and the fond memories he had during various conferences, meeting various persons. Not only that, he also had fond memories of meeting various persons during his annual sojourns to London. Interestingly, most of the panelists who are present here were part of our discussion every month when I met him. Not only that, beyond the panel, some of those who met Soli and then Soli fondly remembered were part, are part of the audience. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Santan, and that has really uh, set the scene, both uh, recognition of, of professional excellence, uh, but also uh, the man and the, uh, the human qualities. So thank you so much for those remarks, uh, Santan. We're now going to uh, ask the, the presidents 
uh, in their running order and starting with Rodney Hanson, the Honourable Rodney Hanson, speaking from Auckland, New Zealand. Rodney was president in 1997 to 1999, a former High Court judge and now with an extensive ADR practice. Uh, Rodney, it's a, a great pleasure to invite you to unmute and to share uh, your reflections, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. It, it is a great honour to uh, join this uh, distinguished uh, company, uh, uh, albeit uh, a melancholy fact that I am the uh, most senior of the uh, presidents here. Uh, I would like to uh, take the opportunity to express my condolences to the uh, uh, members of the Sarabji family. Uh, I regret very much that, uh, at least to the best of my knowledge, I have not met uh, any of you. Uh, but over uh, many years, um, I came to know Solly extremely well. Um, my earliest memories of him go back to the 1980s, uh, the mid 1980s, uh, and my most recent, uh, regrettably, uh, uh, more than 20 years ago. And although uh, that means that my memories of specific incidents um, are, are sparse, uh, my impressions of Ollie, uh, of uh, Solly are clear and strong. Um, I think of him uh, mainly in terms of his annual visits to uh, London for the uh, CLA annual meetings. And I see him always uh, re wearing his, what was then anyway, his trademark Astrakhan hat, um, uh, which I always thought was uh, sort of slightly paradoxical given that he was coming from the heat of Delhi. Uh, no doubt that was largely attributable to the variable uh, midsummer weather of London. Um, I, I could talk at length uh, about his professional qualities, but I will confine myself to uh, my impressions of him uh, as a, a man and as a colleague. Um, his, uh, his zest for life, his energy, uh, and in particular, um, his, uh, his personal warmth, uh, kindness, and courtesy. And uh, in particular, it, it, was, it was marked to me by the fact that despite his uh, uh, giant uh, intellect and his stature uh, as a giant in, in the legal fraternity, he was always a man that, so it seemed to me, was ready to listen and to learn. And I'm reminded of a particular occasion uh, at a council meeting when uh, council had agreed on a position but struggled to find the words to record it. And one of our uh, junior, uh, most newly met, minted uh, members uh, piped up from the cheap seats with a suggestion for uh, a, a, a resolution. Uh, Come here, said Solly, and sit by me. I want to write down what you said. Uh, and that uh, became the resolution. And that, to me, epitomized Solly. It, it was the quality of the message, uh, not the status of the messenger that mattered. Um, I'm conscious of the time and I will confine myself to one uh, personal uh, recollection uh, and uh, one further personal recollection and that was of a visit I made to Delhi in 1989 uh, when I went to Delhi to promote the 1990 uh, a law conference which was to be held in my home uh, of Auckland. Uh, Solly arranged for me to be met at the airport at two o'clock in the morning, I might add. And he hosted a dinner in my honour at his home. And I'm not quite sure then whether you were there, uh, uh, Zena. 
I still have the guest list uh, uh, from that dinner. Uh, 17 people, uh, the great and the good of the uh, Delhi Bar, uh, together with my notes of what Solly told me about them, which are not for publication. To my shame, uh, I, I did not fully appreciate then as I do now, uh, just uh, what an honour was done me by this great and busy man that he should have taken time out uh, to put on this meal and do so in such um, a gracious and generous way. Uh, to my sorrow, uh, and, and this might I add was at a time when he was either about to be uh, or had already been appointed uh, for the first time uh, Attorney General for India. Uh, and it is a, a regret that I was never able to um, reciprocate his hospitality. Um, he was unable to come to Auckland for that particular conference because of his uh, duties as uh, Attorney General. Um, but uh, it was a small consolation that uh, one of uh, the guests at the Delhi dinner, um, uh, RKP Shankardas, who will be known to some of you and who was a former uh, president of the uh, IDA, uh, was able to uh, attend uh, uh, both, uh, both of those dinners. Uh, can I uh, uh, conclude, if I may, uh, with the words of Solly's uh, beloved Shakespeare, uh, his sonnet 30, uh, where uh, after reflecting um, on his shortcomings as a friend of the deceased, uh, uh, the sonnet concludes, but if the while I think on me, uh, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. So it is with you, Solly. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, uh, we really appreciate those reflections and comments. And um, I'm glad we're recording this because we, I'm sure, would all like to go over and, uh, and absorb uh, just the detail of um, uh, what we've heard even to date. Uh, we're moving from Auckland to uh, Kuala Lumpur where I believe uh, Cyrus is there. And uh, Cyrus was president uh, from 1999 to 2003. Uh, Cyrus is now one of the three honorary life presidents of the CLA. And um, if I might say, Cyrus, something of a, a legend in Malaysia. You are yourself a great mentor to, to many lawyers and have been a gracious host to me when I visited uh, KL in November of 2019. And it's a great pleasure now to invite you, Cyrus, to share your reflections. The floor is yours. Mr. President, the distinguished Sarabji family who are present here with us, uh, my colleagues, fellow presidents, and friends. I am, as the president has said, speaking from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, we are gathered on a sad occasion as an alumni of sorts of ex-presidents for the first time to pay tribute to our dearly departed friend and colleague, the Honorable Soli Sarabji. We in Malaysia about, are about three hours ahead of India. So it was sometime in early afternoon of 30th April that I learned of dear Soli's death that morning from Stephen and later from our immediate past president, Santan. By evening, Santan and others forwarded the large number of obituaries that started appearing in the social media in India. And the next day in India's vast array of newspapers from North to South, they spoke of a person was vastly admired and well liked, not just in the legal circles, but by the public at large, 
amongst those who had interacted with him. I have myself, after his death, written a short piece of a personal remembrance of Soli that will appear in our publication, The Commonwealth Lawyer. I there mentioned, friends, that the Soli I knew was entirely through the CLA and Law Asia. We came from different jurisdictions. So I did not have the privilege or the opportunity of being involved with him in many of the great cases that he had advocated in the courts in India. I mentioned of the time when Soli was active in the CLA executive, and this was in the 80s and the 90s. The annual CLA meetings, council meetings, those days used to be held at the Law Society Chambers at Chancery Lane. It was always in summer each year, and Solly, good old Solly, would be on his summer vacation. There was much amusement at the council meetings, and it was almost an unwritten rule observed by whoever was in the chair whether it was Rod or Roger at that time from Zambia, Colin or myself, to move the agenda around to accommodate Soli's arrival, especially for his uh, country report. Soli would then deliver his country report upon arrival on the legal events in India, particularly the cases, with much gusto and with deep knowledge and great insight probably not too objectively, because one discovers that he was involved in these great cases for one side or the other. But nevertheless, they were extremely informative and all of us used to wait for the great events that seemed to be happening in the legal front in India almost every year. I saw him on the last occasion in December of 2017, when I went up to Delhi to attend a felicitation lunch in his honor at the International Convention Center. It had been, I think, his 86th birthday in March that year. And this was a delayed event. Santan was president at that time, and he spoke at this event. And uh, Soli was noticeably frail, but in extremely good spirits. and. Uh, we discussed much about the CLA and of course about how he was carrying on with his legal practice then in India. And I had promised to visit him again. Alas, friends, it was not to be so. The pandemic set in within a year and a half after that event. And once it took it, it took it many casualties as well. And it turned out to be the last occasion when I met and spoke to good old Soli. But friends, the memories of Soli and the mark he left behind live on. That we are gathered today, together today to pay tribute from across the vast reaches of the Commonwealth or in a gathering of the first of its type is a testimony to our great affection and the high regard in which Soli was held. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cyrus. That uh, again brings to life aspects of of Solly, both the the professional and uh, I sent something of a showman as well, but always with a great warmth and humanity. And uh, next, we're going to turn to another uh, of our honorary life presidents. And really, I regard uh, our next speaker as something of a custodian of our. CLA corporate memory. He has been around from really the commencement of the CLA right through and is another example of, of a lawyer with boundless energy and enthusiasm, a tremendous advocate on constitutional and uh, human rights, rule of law matters, an exponent of the Latimer House principles and a great personal mentor to me in my role and uh, Colin Nichols, could I invite you to share your reflections of Solly, please?
although I was at the conferences in 1983 and 1986, following which Cyrus and I and Sonny himself became its first vice presidents, I never really knew Sonny until those council meetings in London in Chancery Lane. Time to coincide in the then president's case to enable him to, to attend the trooping of the colour, and in the case of Solly, his annual visit to London. I, like Cyrus, remember Solly uh, judicially apparently falling asleep when the, those meetings became rather ponderous and at times leaving us altogether, very wisely so. In later years, uh, particularly during the uh, uh, conference in Hyderabad, that wonderful gala dinner at the palace there, I remember his presence and his preeminence on the platform at that uh, conference. Back in London, I recall the uh, parties that he hosted with his family at his flat off the Marylebone High Street and uh, discussing with him on occasions over the years the affairs of the CLA, sometimes alone with him, sometimes with Santan and with Laurie Watt at a little Lebanese restaurant on the corner of Blandford Street and some very special dinners that he hosted uh, with those giants of the Constitution law like himself, uh, the late Sir John Laws, an early victim of COVID himself, uh, Professor Dawn Oliver, and the last occasion that we met on the 23rd of June, 2016, the evening of the night of the vote, a Brexit vote with Lord and Wolf and his great friend, Solly's great friend, Anthony Lester. Solly and I always exchanged Christmas greetings, sending each other cards. But I shall never forget when, in two February 2017, my twin brother, who was also at those conferences in 1983 and 1986, and a fervent member of the CLA, died unexpectedly. And Solly sent me a card on which he had written just nine words. He left his footprints in the sands of time. As lawyers, we rightly serve the interests of our clients. But just as the CLA exists to promote and maintain the rule of law, is the ambition of every one of us to take part in at least one seminal case, one that develops the real, the, develops the law and improves the lot of humankind. In fulfilling his unique role as Attorney General of India and in his life, and with the support and love of his family, Solly truly achieved that ambition a hundredfold. Thank you. Thank you so much, Colm, uh, for those uh, reflections. And uh, uh, really that uh, has, has moved me to, to think of those uh, sincere greetings he brought on the, the sad occasion when your twin passed away. And uh, we, uh, are brought to the realization that this is both a, a, a pleasing opportunity to share memories, but it is also a, a sad moment for personal reflection as well. So thank you, Colin. Uh, I'm now going to keep moving us along. And when uh, I met our next contributor, it was in uh, Hyderabad at the conference that Colin has just mentioned. And he turned to my wife and picking up our accent, said that he once knew um, someone from Northern Ireland and it turned out that 
the person that our next speaker once knew had been in a class at, at the school of my wife. And we immediately said, what a small world it is to, to meet people with these connections in, in Hyderabad. Uh, and Graham Mew, for it, it, it is he, uh, has been a great friend ever since, even venturing on, on one occasion to Belfast to speak in a sports law conference. And he's now a judge of the Superior Court in Ontario and was CLA president in 2005 to 2007. And Graham, you have got up early this morning. We appreciate it. And I know that you were motivated to take part. Could you please share your reflections? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Um, and it, it is a bittersweet moment to, uh, to, to be here um, participating in this. It's so nice to see all of my CLA colleagues. It seems like ages since we've, uh, we've all seen each other. Um, so it's very nice to see you all uh, on the screen uh, this morning. Um, but it is bittersweet because uh, we've lost a dear friend uh, in Solly and uh, someone who I had a tremendous respect for. Um, I was trying to think back to when my first encounter with Solly was, and it was, it was in 1993 at the uh, conference in Nicosia. Um, and it's a matter of some regret that our intercessions since then were not more frequent. But um, brief though our encounters were, uh, they were always memorable. Uh, they were either at Commonwealth Law Conferences uh, or at meetings of the Council, some of which you've already heard uh, described. Those meetings uh, happily coincided, as you've heard, with Solly's annual pilgrimages to the jazz dens of the West End. Um, and uh, uh, the impression he made on me over the years um, was and has been a significant one. At that uh, Nicosia conference, um, Solly was allotted the somewhat dry task of speaking about judicial review of administrative action. I, I actually still have the conference papers and pulled them out the other day. Um, and although the topic on paper appeared to be dry, uh, in the hands of that great orator, Solly Sarabji, uh, he brought the topic to life, um, regaling the audience with his explanation of what seemed to many of us to be the um, the rather extraordinary remedial jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of India. And I, I looked through my collection of papers uh, from other conferences. Solly was a favorite, he, he was always asked to speak. Uh, a guaranteed draw, he spoke on terrorism at one conference, discrimination at the next, always ready to take a stand and to stand his ground. Um, in a 2009 presentation at the Hong Kong conference, um, that great jurist, Justice Michael Kirby of Australia noted under the heading, wise, uh, wise uh, Commonwealth, um, uh, wise Commonwealth voices, that in 2006, uh, Solly was a signatory to an open public letter calling for the repeal of section 277 of the Indian Penal Code which uh, criminalized consensual same-sex acts amongst adults and which thankfully has now been repealed. And it was always like that with Solly, a man of principle, um, an irrepressible man because he could not be put down. Uh, and when he spoke, no matter what the topic, uh, he, would energize, uh, he would energize the presentation, energize the, to the topic, peppered with wit, uh, and wisdom, often provocative, but always with a twinkle in his eye. Um, it was the same in social settings, uh, a raconteur extraordinaire and a generous host, as you've heard from uh, Rodney and others. Uh, one of the highlights of my stay in New Delhi uh, in 2010, when I was uh, uh, on the Court of Arbitration for Sport Panel at the Commonwealth Games, uh, was a lunch with Solly and Samfan um, at the India International Center in New Delhi. Solly was its president at the time, and as Samfan and I arrived, uh, Solly was just finishing, uh, finishing up giving a TV interview, as one did if one was Solly. Um, he was holding court 
in a place where he was clearly revered. We had a memorable and leisurely lunch, and that too was Solly, and, and I, I'm reassured that others have already made this comment. A man with a million things to do, but finding time to entertain his visitor from afar. At, at least, uh, unless one uh, might think that the talk would be of, uh, of, of uh, sterile legal uh, topics about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms uh, and, and what impressed uh, Solly. Um, what really impressed him far more than my, uh, this, uh, my acquaintance with Canadian law is that I came from the same country as the legendary jazz pianist, Oscar Peterson. I was truly saddened. Uh, to wake up to Santan's text early one morning in Kingston, Ontario, telling me that Solly had passed. I then, um, uh, like uh, Cyrus, uh, watched the many media clips and, and read the obituaries that followed. Uh, he was a great son of India, a great man of the law, but also, again, as you've heard, a man of the people, an indefatigable champion of the Commonwealth Lawyers Association and its causes. We will miss him greatly, but we are lucky that we had him for so long. And for that, I am truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Graham. Um, and we appreciate uh, those words, which, which again have brought to life uh, the man and the impact and the legacy that um, Solly uh, leaves for us all in these memories and in this, uh, this opportunity to share these reflections. The third of our Honorary Life Presidents has, to my mind, been the exemplar of support and loyalty to the CLA. Generous in so many ways, Ron Heinrich is the one we all turn to for guidance and advice on process and protocol and on other more general matters. Uh, recently, Ron has been invaluable uh, to me and to our executive committee and council in steering some constitutional reforms which have heralded the opportunity to have council members from every jurisdiction within the Commonwealth rather than have some representative members and the benefits of this type of technology will allow us to hopefully have a much expanded council where all the uh, jurisdictions within the Commonwealth are able to be represented. Uh, Ron Heinrich uh, was uh, our uh, president in 2007 to 2009. And Ron, could you appear if you step into the light a little more, Ron, we'll see you as you speak and we look forward to your reflections now. Thank you, Brian. Um, it's a great privilege for me to be able to speak uh, to this tribute to Solly and honour the great contribution he made to the CLA, CLA. I first met Solly at an annual council meeting in London. I believe it was in about 2001. I did not know much about the CLA at the time. I had been appointed or nominated by the Law Council of Australia to attend a council meeting. Uh, and I travelled to London to do that. I remember the meeting well. It was my first council meeting and it was all very new to me. I remember being introduced to Solly, who appeared to me as a very polite and distinguished gentleman. He was very good with his time and over the years he became a great mentor to me. But at that first council meeting, I was pretty much at sea. However, at the end of the day, and I'm going to talk about some personal encounters with Solly rather than his great career, because others will do that much better than I can. But I had three personal encounters with Solly that I remember to this day. After the council meeting on the first day, as was my want, I decided to go down and visit a law book. Uh, shop and browse some law books, which I used to do on all my trips to London to see what the latest editions were all about. I'd been there about half an hour 
and I weighed my, was making my way through the law book shop and I got to the back of the shop and who should be there but Solly. He was doing the same thing and we got chatting and it became very clear to me very quickly that Solly had a great love of books, not just law books, but books generally. And so we had about a 10 minute chat before he excused himself. And he excused himself very politely and said, look, I'm, I'm going to a jazz club, but I'll see you tomorrow. And sure enough, that's what happened. He went off to the jazz club. The next morning, because I hadn't actually bought a, a book at the law book company or shop, I decided to revisit it early before the council meeting. And I was browsing my way through the bookshelves again. And who should I bump into again? But Solly. He was there and we got talking about a few things about the jazz um, uh, that he so much loved. It became very obvious to me very quickly. I had a discussion with him about the fact that my daughter played in a big swing band and that I was starting to get an appreciation of jazz, which I'd never had before. And so I think we spent about half an hour together chatting about the world and uh, things that weren't to do with the CLA. We then went off to the council meeting together and I remember him making a very significant contribution to the discussions at that first council meeting with me still trying to find my feet. After that uh, encounter with Solly, um, I didn't know very much about the CLA still, even though I'd been to the council meeting. But over the year, I became to know quite a lot more about the CLA and the fact that it had an annual council meeting in London every year. And so sure enough, I was taken off to visit London the following council meeting in London, I think in 2002 or 2003. And as was my want, I visited the law bookshop again. And I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was in the morning before the commencement of the council meeting. And who should be in the shop but Solly? And we both greeted each other like long lost friends. And we had a chat for about half an hour before the council meeting. We actually spoke about some of the things that were on the agenda. Uh, and I, by that stage, was starting to find out how the CLA operated. And over time, Solly became a great uh, friend and mentor of mine. And of course, I learned more about his history, the contribution he'd made to constitutional law, um, his activities as a human rights lawyer, and um, you know, a great promoter of the rule of law. Um, I learned that he was fearless and had been fearless throughout his career. When um, uh, time moved on, uh, I attended a number of Commonwealth law conferences around the world at which Solly attended some, and I met him and spent time with him. I was aware that he was a great friend of the CLA and the council members, and that he'd had a very long relationship with people who've already spoken this evening. My enduring memory of Solly, however, is the Commonwealth Law Conference in Hyderabad. I'm aware how much time and effort he put into making sure that conference was a success. The Commonwealth Law Conference in Hyderabad was not without its challenges. All conferences have challenges, but Hyderabad had uh, some specific challenges in getting people to come from around the Commonwealth to visit the conference. Solly worked as Santan said, and by this stage, Santan had become a very great friend of mine. Um, and Solly worked with Santan um, to make sure that that conference was an enduring success. In particular, I remember the wonderful gala party or gala dinner that we had at the palace. Um, that was an amazing evening. The music was fantastic. The jazz band was, uh, you know, my, I had one of my daughters with me who was a great jazz fan and she danced all night to the jazz band. We had to drag her home. So it was a great night. I spent some time speaking to Solly that evening uh, and it's very sad that we have lost him. But as somebody earlier said, it was a great thing that we had him for so long and that he was such a wonderful friend of the CLA. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, thank you so much for those reflections. I, 
I must say, I didn't move you down as a jazz fan, Ram, but uh, I, I will now uh, follow that up with you in, in, in future occasions. But uh, great to have those memories from you. And thank you so much. Moving from Australia now to South Africa and the president from 2009 to 2011. In fact, the president during this uh, great Hyderabad conference is our friend Mohammed Hussein, who is so assured in the, the breadth of his uh, vision, advice, and is always centered on what is right and always um, impresses me with his uh, values and integrity and has been a great source of support uh, recently as we have considered the constitutional reforms in a little working group uh, with Ron. And Mohammed, it's great to see you. And I look forward very much to your reflections of Solly today. Over to you. Thank you very much, Brian, and uh, greetings to the Sorabji family, friends and colleagues. I first met Solly in London at my first council meeting of the CLA in 1998 in Chancery Lane. As Solly was magnanimous, warm and embracing in his welcome, which set the foundation for a long relationship which I cherished and from which I benefited enormously. His contribution to the debates at council and to mapping the strategic direction for the CLA was typically incisive, erudite and passionate. We very much look forward to our meetings. Soli would be very keen to hear about developments within our new democracy and also about the role of South Africans of Indian origin in the anti-apartheid struggle. On my part, I appreciated his interest in the jurisprudence of our newly formed constitutional court in which he took great interest. And I also enjoyed Soli lapsing into Hindi when he wished to make some private remark, of which there were many, I should assure you, or when he thought I needed some cultural infusion. At one of the early council meetings, Soli and I had a debate about legal positivism and judicial activism. With consummate skill and grace, Soli systematically started demolishing my arguments. Rodney Hansen was the president at the time, and thankfully he intervened to prevent further bloodletting. I thought better of debating again with Soli for a long time after that. There were times when Soli used to nod off during council meetings or at conferences. However, he would soon wake with a start and within seconds pick up on the discussion and contribute to it. Of course, he always denied that he had nodded off and claimed to have been concentrating with his eyes shut. Soli had a good, if not wicked, sense of humor. I remember the times we would sit together at conferences and he would skillfully mimic the speech and actions of passers-by and colleagues. Discretion forbids me to say exactly what he used to say. This youthful facet of this intellectual giant was most endearing to me. A particular highlight for me was to be able to attend Soli's 80th birthday celebrations in Delhi and a few days later in Mumbai in 2010. The Delhi celebration was huge with around seven separate food stations to cater for the large number of attendees amongst whom were the who's who of the legal and political fraternity. On that day, the Indian parliament sat until late and until early evening, passing a law dealing with women's representation in parliament. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and senior ministers nevertheless made sure that they attended Soli celebration despite having delayed proceedings by a couple of hours. It was difficult to get more than a few minutes with Soli that night, since the crowd vied for his attention, a testament to the love, adoration and respect he earned. At the Mumbai party, I shared a table with retired chief justices and other judges. They spent most of the evening discussing profound rule of law and human rights issues. 
At first, I thought that they could certainly have spent a bit more time on mundane or lighthearted issues, since we were, after all, at a birthday party. But I soon realized that a discussion of those subjects was in fact a fitting tribute to the person Soli was, an inveterate champion of human rights and tireless defender of the rule of law. At a dinner Soli hosted for my wife and me at his house in Delhi, we learned more about his passion, no, his obsession with jazz and how it was matched only by his obsession with the law. In his young days, I understand that Soli played the violin and later the clarinet. Over the last few years, my contact with Soli was through Santhan and a few emails. I knew that his health was fading, but he never complained. I hoped to visit him in Delhi again, but it was not to be. I will miss Soli very much and regret that I did not have more opportunity of basking in the radiance of this wonderful human being. I do, however, content myself by imagining Soli in heaven, debating the law, imitating all and sundry, and playing clarinet with Benny Goodman. Thank you. Oh, superb, Mohammed! Lovely, lovely thoughts, lovely memories. I really don't think there's any danger of this gathering falling asleep or thinking with their eyes closed, given the, uh, the, the brilliance of these recollections and the warmth and affection that is shining through so far. Now, you might have noticed that while we have been uh, diverse in jurisdictions across the Commonwealth so far, we have not been particularly diverse uh, regarding our gender uh, quota, and that is now to be remedied by our next contributor, uh, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria, president of the CLA from 2011 to 2013, and a most distinguished and influential practitioner in the great jurisdiction that is Nigeria, such supporters of the CLA. Boma Alabi and I have a special relationship as being born in Nigeria, I am allowed to call her my Nigerian sister. And Boma, my Nigerian sister, could I invite you to share your reflections? Thank you. Greetings from Lagos, Nigeria, to Zena, Jahangir, Zia, and Homas, all our past presidents, and of course, my brother my Nigerian brother, our President Brian. My memories are around the three city tour that Sully kindly arranged for us with Santan's um, able assistance to promote the Cape Town conference. So um, I am Nigerian, I am also British, and I'm not used to applying for visas or expecting that I need a visa to travel anywhere. And so I, you know, two or three days to when we're supposed to settle for India, I said to my secretary, you know, book the ticket and travel arrangements. And they came back to say to me, oops, you need a visa. I said, no, I'm British. Yes, you still need a visa. <laughs> Fine, what do I do? We looked at the visa requirements. It took, it, you know, it took more time than I had. In any case, I uh, contacted Sully and Santan, and a letter was sent to me. I needed a letter of invitation by Sully. I took it to the Indian High Commission in Lagos, and the lady behind the counter, once she saw the name of the person inviting me to India, was like, Mr. Sully Sarabji, you know him? <laughs> I said, yes, Sully is a friend of mine. He is a friend of yours. I mean, it was like I was friends with God. <laughs> I had no idea how much, you know, how huge this friend of mine's reputation was in India, but her reaction told me. And she said, 
well, um, when are you traveling? I told her, she said, your visa will be ready at 3 p.m. or something, same day, literally. It should have taken weeks. And um, you don't need to come back. You can send someone to get it. <laughs> so <laughs> I got red carpet, thanks to Solly. Visa in the you know same day, somebody went to pick it up and she said to extend her greetings to Solly. I did take her name down and I did extend her greetings. So that really gave me an idea of just how high the regard that his people had for him uh, in India. Because to me, Solly was just Solly. Like, you know, that which is exactly how, how he, he related. Now we arrived and were taken to the ICC. To my horror, this it was like a dormitory. I mean, I'd never, I hadn't stayed in that sort of place in years since I left boarding school. <laughs> Single bed with a, you know, a sink in the room. No, gosh. So I phoned Sonny up and I said. Who checked us in here, for goodness sake? Um, um, he said, well, what's wrong with it? I said, is there no Taj Mahal in India, in, in Delhi? Why are we in this place? He said, oh, um, what's wrong? I said, look, Sully, I am a lady. And I expect to have some of the finer things in life around me at this stage in my life. <laughs> and on sweet bedroom to start with, proper white sheets and all the, you know, conveniences. Where is your wife? Because I'm sure she wasn't aware that we're being checked into this place. <laughs> and I was absolutely correct. It turns out it was Solly and his secretary and Zena was in New York at the time. <laughs> so so it, at that point, I said, okay, I forgive you. Um, turned to the dinner, which he very, you know, kindly hosted for us at his home that evening. And I had to remind him, I said, Sully, I hope there are ladies coming. <laughs> you know? Because he didn't see gender. It was all about, you know, people of talent and just getting on with everyone, be it male, female, or whatever. So he truly was gender blind, not biased at all. Um, and what a, another good, great memory I have was his 80th birthday, not a big party, the little party, we, you know, little dinner we had um, in Hyderabad. And just the warmth, the, you know, enjoying the music and being there to converse with everybody interested in what you were saying, you know, focusing and genuinely interested. That was a quality Solly shared with Her Majesty the Queen, because on the one occasion I met her and was introduced, the same focus and interest in the individual. So I will quote Solly's message to Colin at the passing of his twin. And I say to this Rabji family, be consoled. He left his footprints in the sands of time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Boma, for those uh, unique reflections of yours. And at the next conference that you will attend, we will make sure that there's white sheets and uh, all the conveniences. Lovely to, lovely to see you, lovely to hear from you, uh, Boma. We're now going to um, move from Lagos to London, and it would be hard to find a more connected lawyer than our next president frequently sought for comments on uh, our BBC and other national networks in the UK on all matters from royal family privacy to more recently Britney Spears conservatorship. Uh, Mark Stevens is uh, really a fantastic source of support, connections, uh, speakers and wisdom in the CLA and uh, was president in 2013 to 2015, and we look forward, Mark, to your contribution now, please. Solly's astrakhan hat evoked lovely memories for me, 
Um, but my first memory of Solly is a little bit hazy. Well, it was 35 years ago and not overly memorable for either of us. I remember being introduced to Solly by Judge Ira, Lowe, Ira Rowe of Jamaica at the Commonwealth Conference in Ocho Rios, Jamaica in September 1986. After that, I met him intermittently on his visits to London around the free expression work that he did. Back then, scandalous rumors abounded in the London legal village of Solly being spotted by, you know, friends of friends at jazz clubs London, in, in London. No, personally, I never believed that such an illustrious man would be in, seen in such seedy dives as Ronnie Scott's uh, and similarly shockingly outre places. How wrong was I? Solly was indeed a man of many parts, as I would slowly come to know. My main interest was Solly's work on freedom of expression. I was curious about his interest and once asked, Solly, don't you have freedom of expression in India? And with a twinkle in his eye, he responded, of course we have freedom of speech in India. After all, it's constitutionally guaranteed. But he went on, the problem in India is that we don't always have freedom after speech. And in this brief, typically solly homily, he imparted more information and learning than you would get from your average law lecture. And Solly knew that his humor would reinforce the point he was making and etched it on my memory, as indeed you see this, this today. In 1993, Solly wrote a seminal work, The Importance and Use of International Comparative Law, The Indian Experience, published by Article 19, underscoring the importance of freedom of expression to a democratic society and the impact of international comparative law in developing positive case law in India. Article 19 also, as some of you will know, played a really important part in his career, sitting on the board as he did and ultimately chairing it. He worked with luminaries like Baroness D'Souza, formerly Lord Speaker, Lord Leicester QC, who's been mentioned as well, Professor Eric Berendt and Professor Kevin Boyle, as well as the French uh, judge Roger Herrera, amongst many other luminaries. And he was working with Article 19 during the most difficult period for free speech in the United Kingdom when on Valentine's Day 1989, the Ayatollah Khomeini uh, pronounced a fatwa on the British writer Salman Rushdie after the publication of his book, The Satanic Verses. Uh, Professor Boyle, who was then the chair and Baroness D'Souza began work to protect him and Solly fearlessly took on this uh, issue as vice chair and continued when he ascended to the chair of Article 19. Now, I myopically thought that free speech was Solly's main interest, but of course that wasn't the case. And as Colin Nichols said, it's our legal ambition to be in an important case, one that has impact. And Solly wore his jurisprudence very lightly particularly his social justice impact litigation. We sat casually chatting some years later about his late, then latest case. And he told me he'd taken a case on behalf of people who could not, because of their caste and economic circumstances, protect themselves within the embrace of the rule of law. Typically, Solly had taken up their case on their behalf, setting a new precedent, allowing others to bring cases to protect the vulnerable around India. And of course, that case has now been much cited in other countries and developed the law around the world. Like all of us, I miss Solly, his friendship, his warmth, his intelligence, his guidance, but mostly his humor. And I'd like to end, if I may, Brian, by thanking you, his family, for the generosity that you have shown in sharing Solly with us all. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, another dimension to this uh, multifaceted uh, and great man, and we appreciate your tribute. Um, we're returning to Australia now for a president who I first met along with his uh, wife, Amanda, in Hyderabad, and his then really young daughter, who amazingly was called India. And this uh, immediately resonated with me, and I struck up 
a friendship with Alex and Amanda and was pleased to host Daughter India in our home in Northern Ireland when uh, India was uh, completing some studies in England. <coughs> Alex is a, a well-known figure in South Australia, regular broadcaster, uh, member of the uh, Australian Navy, uh, would you believe, and was president in 2015 <coughs> to 2017. And Alex, your tribute, please. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. And uh, uh, I must say that the fact that my daughter's named India opened many doors for me uh, when I was in India. Uh, she had a ball there at the Hyderabad conference, which is one of our lifetime celebrations. And I, of course, I had some thoughts written down, but I've thrown them out now because Brian's taken me right to the guts of them. We, we had a ball in Hyderabad and we're there with our little daughter who loved, everyone knew her. They sort of knew me a bit. They loved my wife, but they all knew my daughter. I don't know how that happened. I wasn't there at the time, but it was this really fun experience that we had at that conference, which is the first time that I call meeting Solly um, and remark to myself, who's this man, uh, was at the Hong Kong conference, to my memory, when he led this sort of plug for the next conference we're going to have is India. This is my memory. I hope it's correct, because uh, it was this really quite sensational thing. And here was this fellow in the midst of it who was really calm and charismatic. So at the same time, everyone was sort of singing Jai Ho and having this fantastic uh, video. And the fellow running it was not, not being too jumping around or anything, yet all attention was drawn to him. And that's how I knew him. So a lovely thing for the family. It's a sad occasion, yes, but it's a lovely occasion for you to hear all these different people saying pretty much all the same thing. What an engaging person uh, the job, uh, husband, father uh, was, and he was. So when I'd go to a conference, and I was a bit of a nervous person, especially if my wife or do daughter weren't there, they were my crutch. And I'd look around and think, oh, I don't know, really know anybody. And all you'd see there was Sully, whether it was in Qatar or, or any other place in the world, I'd see him and think, oh, I'm lucky. I know him, I can go and talk to him. And that's as I remember him as just this person. I've written the notes, charismatic and calm in a situation where other people often were not. And I imagine Santan, the world of Indian politics and law might not be the calmest of places. Yet he came across as the person who was always in control and the person that you wanted to be with. That's as I found it. I'm glad I have in uh, concert with him that I will not off during law council uh, Commonwealth lawyer meetings. Brian, that's no criticism of you. Uh, it's, it's late at night in Australia. Uh, but Ron, I have never met him browsing for law books. And I have never met you browsing for law books. I don't think I'll meet anyone in a law book shop, sorry to say, that's not my, that's not my strongest point. But it was certainly there at the Hong Kong conference where I met him and thought, who is this chap? Always one you'd want to seek out. He was a very good help to me with Santan, uh, when my role uh, when I was getting up in the Commonwealth Lawyers, uh, that Santan and Sully would, would assist, but also, um, in the Law Council, which is the, the Law Council of Australia, and you would often go and do international things, which is where I saw him a lot in these international functions and conferences where you would want to see him. But I was reminded when Boma was talking about the practical help, because I remember I was coming from something in uh, Delhi, and I can't remember what it was, but it might have been a time of some troubles in Delhi. Uh, and a fellow was standing at the door of the airport in an army uniform with a really big looking, I would have thought it was a 303, I'll stand corrected. And he said, you can't come in unless you've got your ticket. Well, because I'm from Australia. You go into the airport, you get your ticket there, which I thought I'd do. And this fellow wouldn't have a thing of it. Obviously I look like a terrorist. Uh, and so he wouldn't let me in and he had a very big gun. And I wasn't really keen to argue with him. As Brian rightly said, I have knowledge of the damage guns can do for my role as commander of the Royal Australian Navy, as unusual as that might appear. And I thought, I'm, I, I'm stuck here. I can't get past the man with the gun. I can't get my ticket. I'll have to live the rest of my life in India. Then I remembered 
as Boma said, I had a letter from Solly in my bag. Why it was in that bag, I have no idea. But I rushed and pulled it out. I could show that to the man and he ushered me through. So there you are. I think I should, I should have um, sealed that letter in plastic so I can use it for the rest of my life when I visit again because that opened the door. Guns put down, fingers off the trigger, and I get to go into the airport and go home. That was the measure of the man. So I'm really glad that the family can be here and uh, have a happy reminisce. It's a sad time, but this is also a happy time to reflect on a person who's made such a difference. I've spoken about very minor things myself, but you've heard and you know of the cases in which he was involved and things like that. It's just really sensational contribution to the world. And I'm delighted to have met him. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, that was uh, uh, very energizing as we come to the end of our uh, contributions. And I want to really uh, bookend our contributions by inviting back Santan to uh, simply give a couple of short reflections uh, before I, I then move to our concluding elements of this webinar. <clears throat> uh, I think I've mentioned that Santan, who was my immediate predecessor, had the ambition of visiting every country in the Commonwealth during his presidential term. He and he, he very nearly made that. And, uh, <laughs> but as a consequence of his visiting, of his bringing greetings to the chief justices and the presidents of bar associations, the profile of the CLA was heightened enormously. And I have benefited from that in following in Santan's wake. And very much like Alex has said, oh, yes, you must be India's father. Uh, uh, I am known as I, yes, uh, you're a president. We, we know Santan and uh, always Santan. Your presence has, has preceded me in a most helpful uh, way. And you, too, have had the, uh, the dubious pleasure of contributing to conferences and participating in events in Belfast. And we hope that more travel might be available soon. But could you just close this part of our event with a few concluding observations, Santan? You just need to unmute. Thanks. There we are. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Uh, let me say, uh, I would say uh, profusely thanks to this initiative by CLA, but for which we wouldn't have had so much of remembrances from all the past presidents of their experience with Soli, both personal and his contribution towards the rule of law in the Commonwealth. I would say thank one and all, all the panelists who are here, and much more than that, the, all the family members, Soli's wife, his two sons and daughter, who spared the time to be with us, encouraged us we are but for which this particular program would not be possible. Yes, from the reflections which, which we get from everybody's contribution is, Soli has definitely left his footprints and he will be fondly remembered, not just in India, but across the Commonwealth for his contributions. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Santan. And uh, moving on, I want to introduce our Vice President for the Australasia hub of the CLA, uh, within whose vast jurisdiction uh, India lies. And Stephen Tiru is um, going to bring a greeting uh, on behalf of the Australasia region. Speaking from Kuala Lumpur, uh, Stephen, it's great to see you. And uh, could you bring your greeting and announcement, please? Thank you, Brian. Warm greetings to the family of Soli, distinguished past presidents of the CLA and members of the audience. Uh, it is indeed a, a privilege and honor uh, to be part of this very august gathering, unprecedented, an unprecedented uh, pres presidential tribute in honor of Soli. Uh, he was undoubtedly a distinguished and eminent advocate in the Australasia region of the CLA. And on behalf of the Australasia Hub of the CLA, I wish to express uh, our deepest condolences to the family uh, and his loved ones. 
Solly was a torch bearer advocate in this part of the world. His uh, trailblazing achievements, uh, particularly in the field of uh, public law, uh, is quite peerless. So in memory of his uh, salutary and uh, stupendous achievements, the Australasia hub of the CLA has decided that we will honor Solly by organizing an annual memorial lecture series, which will begin in March, 2022. March being the month uh, in which uh, Soli was born. Now, the intention behind this lecture series is to remember all the achievements of Soli, indeed his eternal and tireless defense of the rule of law, justice and human rights that should not be forgotten. So we hope to have this uh, inaugural lecture next year, and we look forward to having all of you with us in that lecture. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, thank you, Stephen. And uh, uh, now we're coming to the, the end of this particular webinar. Uh, I add my thanks and appreciation to you all for uh, your contributions. And um, I thank the family for uh, sharing this with us and uh, to, to Zena and your three children. It's been a great delight to see your reactions and your attention uh, to the, the tributes that have been paid. And I understand, Zena, that your daughter Zia, uh, herself a very eminent lawyer in India, is going to say a few words on behalf of the family. Uh, Zia, please. Thank you. Uh... I think both uh, my mother and all of us really, really appreciate uh, the fact that you have taken so much time and trouble to organize this event. I know that the Commonwealth Lawyers Association was very, very dear to Baba, and uh, it was uh, one of the uh, causes that he wanted to constantly be involved with. And as all of you have uh, shown, he really spent time with each and every one of you and got to know you and got to make sure that uh, he laid his uh, print in some way on the association. Um, I think after my father's passing, all of us realized that we were probably too close to him to understand uh, the mark that he had really left on so many people, on so many causes, on the country uh, in essence. And the social justice impact litigation that he was talking about is really where you see uh, my father having lived up to every passion of his and having made sure that he committed and uh, got involved and made a difference to India's jurisprudence in a way. I was asked to write a book many moons ago on 10 judgments that changed India. And I could turn to nobody else but my father to give me those 10. And when I got those 10, uh, even though he tried to be uh, a little fair, I realized just how many of those he was involved in. And the only comment he had when my book came out is that I had forgotten to put in a very important judgment. And when I told him, but you decided the list finally, when we discussed it, he says, no, no, you must have caught me at the wrong time. You missed out this very, very important judgment, the Bomai judgment. Uh, so I think that, you know, all of us remember my father in the way that we uh, are so happy to see as a family that you do. You, you loved him, you respected him, uh, you were involved with uh, the things that he thought mattered to all of you. Uh, and I think the goodwill that he has left behind really leaves him in a way larger than life for all of us. Uh, we can see that all of you have also seen his sense of humor, uh, the way he would mimic people. Uh, on the few occasions that I appeared with him as, as his junior, uh, in the middle of the matter, he would start mimicking the judge. And I would be terrified that the judge would hear all this and we would just lose the case. Uh, but uh, that would not stop uh, Papa and his naughty sense of humor. I think his generosity as a host, along with my mother, is... Uh, uh, well known to Delhi and to friends around the world. I think he really enjoyed good company uh, and he enjoyed meeting interesting people. And they 
they enjoyed meeting him because he was interesting. So it was wonderful to see uh, his eyes would lit up whenever he would want to meet somebody that he hadn't met for long. Uh, I think ultimately a thoughtful man, a man with a purpose, uh, which uh, God was gracious enough to allow him to achieve in large part, uh, gave him the opportunity, gave him the landscape. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we wish him well on his journey with a lot of love as uh, members of his family. I can see that all of you do too. Uh, Papa will be smiling as he listens to all of us uh, this hour plus and uh, being very happy that so many of you took the time and trouble uh, right from early times in Canada to late times in Australia. Uh, I, I, I think uh, on behalf of my mother and my brothers, we really want to express our deepest appreciation and gratitude. For this. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Zia. Um... We appreciate those comments and, and further insights. Uh, it's now my task to bring to a conclusion this webinar, which is being recorded and will be accessible fairly soon through the, the Commonwealth Lawyers Association. There are also, as you have heard, articles being written for the, the Commonwealth uh, Law Journal. And uh, we are delighted that Stephen was able to be here to announce the uh, proposals for the Soli Sarabji uh, Memorial Lecture. We hope that uh, the family take uh, comfort, pleasure and some additional recollections beyond India's shores and across the Commonwealth and we were delighted to be able to pull this together. Uh, it was actually one of the easier multi-party webinars we've arranged because everybody was instantly committed willing, no matter what time of the day or night, to take part. And that too is its own testament to the wonderful memory of Soli Sarabji, uh, to whose name and honour and memory this webinar is dedicated. Uh, thank you all for attending, and we will now close the webinar. Good day. <laughs>